Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, April the 6th. It's Unenjoyment Friday. My name's Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please take a moment to read over this disclaimer. Basically, it says, I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolio. So everything that I talk about cannot be construed as investment advice because I don't know what's in your portfolio and I don't know your risk parameters. So it is not uh, financially responsible for me to tell you what to put in your portfolio at this time. Uh, and please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having all that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data. Not a whole lot across the pond, but we did get German, uh, German industrial production numbers. They came in at negative 1.6%, expected to be a positive 0.2%. They did revise last month's number up slightly from negative 0.1% to a positive 0.1%, but that is not making up for this pullback in German industrial production, much bigger than expected. Remember, I've been talking about we're seeing the global market slow down as we're still kind of getting steam going, which was going to increase the value of the dollar, right? When we, they slow down, we transfer money back into dollars. Well, we're, that is still in effect, and we could start seeing that happen here in the United States as the uh, markets overseas start slowing down, that could put a drag on us. And uh, if we look at our unenjoyment numbers, which is the non-farm payroll um, numbers that we get out the first Friday of every month, almost the first Friday, depending, I'm not gonna go into all the reasons why it's not always the first Friday, but that's what we used to call it on the floor was non-farm payrolls was unenjoyment. And just a play on words with unemployment obviously. All right, so let's get on with it. Average hourly earnings came in at 0.3%, expected to be 0.3%. That is good in line with expectations. We want to see buying power here in the United States to increase the uh, economies of scale, if you will. And then we got non-farm payroll unemployment change or employment change came in at 103,000 hires, expected to be 188,000 hires. Uh, they did revise last month's number up slightly from a, a 313,000 hires to 326,000 hires, but that's only 13,000 hires more than expected. That's not making up for the 85,000 deficit we saw on this economic data point. We also saw the unemployment rate uptick uh, to 4.1% expected to be 4%. So uh, a lot of things go on with that unemployment rate. It could be people seeing that the economy is turning around. It may be the time to start looking for a job. Therefore, they come off of the discouraged workers list, which doesn't count as part of the unemployment and become unemployed. So we could be seeing all of those levers and pulleys as well. But one of the bad things that we saw there was there's not a lot of hiring going on right now. And then later on today, we have uh, FOMC Chair Powell speaking. Uh, it's one o'clock Eastern. All right, on to the overall markets. We got crude oil off uh, about $1.30 or so. One thing to note, it got below that 23 Fibonacci level. What, something we're seeing here with these economic data points, crude oil should suffer if we are not seeing this global uh, pickup in the economies. So that being said, that means one would think that if manufacturers are pulling back, uh, consumers might be starting to pull back, things of that nature, that should cause less demand for crude oil and therefore the price should come off. Uh, that's kind of what we're seeing right now with crude oil off a little bit. Still in the 60s, hasn't gone down uh, and tested that 60 handle, which is what I expect to be happening in the next week or so. I just think that there is a little bit less demand for crude oil than what we're seeing. Plus, everybody is ramped up on their production. Therefore, we're going to have a lot of supply, less demand that should exacerbate uh, some of that move to the downside. We've got gold futures moving higher by about uh, $7.80. Why is that? Because we're seeing all of these levers and pulleys happen in the overall uh, environments of crude oil coming off, equities coming off. Uh, gold should start to push higher, right? Um, as there is more of a flight to safety here. Um, and bonds probably aren't going to be going anywhere because most of the Fed governors are saying, well, we're a little bit less sure of four rate hikes in 2018 now that we're starting to see some of this economic data points 
I've been talking about that for a while. I think they should have held off uh, at least one of the last two to see what was going on. Because to me, it was obvious. They were starting to see a, a slowdown across the pond, and that doesn't bode well for our interest rates to go higher. It's actually going to hurt them even more if we continue to raise interest rates uh, at a time when they're struggling. Anyway, Bitcoin futures trading right now at 6,600. And I've talked about this. I just think this is a death march to 58.80. It's uh, at this point, I think, pretty lock solid that it's going to at least give that a run for its money on testing that level there. All right. Uh, then the VIX moving higher back into the 20s again. All right. Uh, the 20 uh, for 2018 is the 10 for 2017 or the same as. Uh, it seems like right now, hopefully we'll stay at elevated levels so we can get some premium, right? All right. Anyway, uh, VIX moving higher as the overall equities are moving lower. We got the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 300 and 80 points, almost 400 points right now on the lows of the day and testing the nine day moving average as we speak. One thing I want to note here, we talked about the bulls trying to keep it above these different Fibonacci levels. That is still important. Dow Jones doesn't really give the full picture of the overnight session. So um, in a sense, it's a little bit cleaner. You can see on the unemployment data, uh, the market just kind of fell out of bed. There was just no holding it up. Uh, the one thing to note, if we get above this 30 Fibonacci, uh, the uh, 38 Fibonacci level for the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average, that's going to look like a continuation pattern, you guys. And I'll show you a little bit better uh, picture of that in the NASDAQ. As you can see, we got this doji, which you know generally signals a bit of a top here. One thing to note, if we finish up near um, the highs of the day or unchanged or even let's just call it let me look at it real quick if I can say we close at somewhere above 6575 let's call it somewhere around 6575 that is going to make it look like a continuing pattern because we'll have a uh, bearish doji on the top and then another doji just almost complete mirror image opposite of it right next to each other that generally signals a continuation pattern so the bulls are looking for that type of setup right now. It's above the nine day moving average. If they can get it to settle just a little bit higher than that, you know, let's call it uh, 25 more ticks to the upside in the NASDAQ, which would, you know, still be negative on the day, but it will make the charts look a little bit more bullish. Uh, same situation with the mini S and P's, you know, we're not seeing as much rebound as we saw in like the NASDAQ tech leading the way there. But again, we can finish up here, uh, you know, 2650, let's call it above 2650. That is going to look more bullish or like a more continuation uh, to the upside. But remember yesterday I talked about the 61 Fibonacci and this 38 Fibonacci level acting as a major line in the sand. It also lines up with the value area high pretty closely anyway, very closely. We didn't settle above that. I said that the bulls needed to get above that in order to really make this uh, a strong case for breaking this bearish pattern. Didn't happen. Today, we tried to test that and overnight didn't happen again and overall started slumping on the bad economic data points. Again, this market needs to get up and at least probably get up around the value area. So like I said, 2650 is probably where we need to be in the NASDAQ or sorry, in the E-mini S&Ps in order to not really look as bearish as it does right now. Because at this point, you guys, this looks like a confirmation of a midterm top or an intra-move top. So just a dead cap bounce or uh, something along those lines that we used to call it on the floor. A dead cap bounce was when you get a drop and you get just that bounce in order to get everybody in before the market really puts the punishment on. Um, this right now, to me, looks like it's a little bit of a confirmation or it looks like it's confirmating the uh, top, but we have a long way to go in the day, right? Uh, it's pretty light volume though, but if the E-mini S&Ps get that late day rally, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and can finish at those above those levels or at those levels that I'm talking about, that is going to be um, a little bit more bullish than what we're seeing right now. To me, right now, it looks pretty bearish and it looks like we're gonna go back down to uh, test 25, 30, 
let's call or 20, what is that, 25, 35, let's call it. But it wants to go back down there, I think, uh, if we can't get that late day rally or this afternoon rally coming up. All right, let's look at it on the daily chart, uh, which is a 30 minute breakdown. These are 30 minute bars, 30 minute candles, if you will. You can see overnight the market just started slumping. A lot of this stuff had to do with announcing more rounds of tariffs against China. There's this trade war going on. We also got the bad economic data. Uh, you know, the market overnight inventory got really short right away. They tried to flush them out, but you can see on that economic data point, they were lo and behold, right? And the overall market has since started coming off. Like I said, day's not done. We haven't gotten that rally. Maybe late afternoon, we can rally up there. That's going to make it look a little bit more uh, bullish, but we've settled here or lower. Uh, to me, that is just not looking uh, very good for at least the near term. All right, on to some things that I've done. Uh, th this is the trade that I talked about yesterday. I didn't like it. We have high implied volatility. I don't see implied volatility coming out. I messed up on this one. I thought it was outside of this option expiration cycle. Uh, it is right there at the point of control, which is where I expected it to kind of land and settle down. Uh, yesterday was looking pretty good. It was right there at the point of control, but too much going on. I decided this trade probably was one to pull the rip cord on, just get out of it while I had the chance. Um, it is being supported by the 200 day and the nine day moving average right now. And it's right there. So, you know, if you want to stay in this, you can, but for me, the risk reward, uh, I'm just working on theta decay and I'm going to be fighting an uphill battle against volatility expansion heading into this uh, earnings. So I just decided to get out while I could, you know, for the, it's pretty much a scratch uh, for the most part. Uh, I went in there and sold the April, shorted the 145 puts, 170 calls to create that strangle. I sold that for $1.74 in there and then I bought it back for $1.50. Yeah, I made a little bit of money on it. Uh, but enough to cover my commissions and maybe a little bit to uh, buy a piece of bread. <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, it was a scratch. It was way against me for a long time. As you can see with this volatile market, it was getting out of hand. Almost took it to a point where I, I needed to uh, be a little bit more mechanical. Maybe that would have still worked out. I don't know. But it didn't test my break even. So I didn't need to get to that point of being really uh, aggressive with it. So got a little bit lucky, decided to pull the ripcord on it and get out. Uh, and that's the only thing I've done. Been playing around with a couple other things, looking for some high implied volatility stocks, which there's a lot out there, but we also have earnings that we have to start worrying about coming back into the picture. So uh, playing around with that, getting ready for the Iron Condor webinar today, where I'm going to be talking about how to set that up. Yeah, you can go online. It's basically selling a call spread and selling a put spread. Hey, how much more difficult can it be? Well, where's the strike location? What type of environment should I be putting that in? Uh, when do I become mechanical and try to defend this strategy when it goes against me? Try and find that out online. No, they don't tell you because they don't know. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do that stuff in today's webinar. All right. So check it out at protraderstrategies.com. The Iron Condor is going to be live today after the close. Uh, also, give me a like or dislike, comment on it. Let me know so I can uh, uh, know if this stuff is working out for you guys. Let me know if uh, what I'm talking about is what you guys need in your daily trading activities, all right? This is kind of the things that I look at, but I don't necessarily know what everybody else looks at. And I can kind of tailor these a little bit if I find out what you guys are liking and disliking, all right? So check it out. Give me a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it is. You know, I look at it all as constructive criticism uh, and uh, let me know how you feel, all right? So if you can't take that, take it easy.